Howdy y'all, this is A.R. Cavley. Welcome back to my channel. As we continue our forbidden adventures in the Forbidden Lands, they had just finally convinced Elvish Princess Mia, desperate and haggard as she was, to release the demon, release the monster, so that she could fight him. Or so that so that Lennox could fight the uh, the demon and put her out of her misery one way or the other. <laughs> so again, I'm not going to say there's any experience. And I'm just going to leave the weather the same. They're not going anywhere today. They are, or actually, it's it's still the same day, actually. Just a different session. <laughs> so... Uh, but it is a new session, so we're going to shuffle our cards. So they begin to plan. They know now that it's trapped in the tree, which makes sense. And it seems the tree can almost sense something as it's a, uh, uh, as the leaves start to tremble just a little bit every now and then with no wind. And every now and then, one or two will fall, helpless or harmlessly, as far as they know. <laughs> uh, but the skeletons, and there's there's really only about a dozen of them. Some of them are, well, they're all pretty much just skeletons. Some of them have a little bit of uh, dry, desiccated meat left over their frame but they come and they stand nearby they don't really have any weapons or anything all of their all of their tools rotted away long ago so now they are looking for i mean gosh there's not really not really anything that they can they can think to do. I wonder if I wonder if we could just burn him out. Burn his flesh, burn whatever's left. There's an idea. Will that work? Let us ask our yes or no. Just do a straight yes or no. Five of diamonds. So yes, the higher numbers, more definitive. So yes, that would work. Okay, so we'll say that will work. Um, he runs it by, of course the uh, princess and she says the tree will not burn easily but if you set a flame around the base of it as he steps out as the tree opens up it may cause him it may cause him harm that's good thinking lennox master lennox all right, so they've come up with that. So they spend some time getting it, getting the tree ready, and using some maybe some pitch from the torches and, and and such. Is there anything else that they could do? I mean, I well, they could kind of said, oh, 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 he's got. Not only does he have a, uh, they could do fire. Zell has a bear trap. Although I guess it's probably on the horse, but they're going to set they're going to set the bear trap up. Can you open it up to make sure that he goes a certain direction? Yes. When the tree untwists and opens, he will come out. 
and she uh, uh, tells him that it'll be uh, facing west. You should be able to see the, the direction the roots are pointing. One is pointing straight west. He'll come out right next to that. And so with that information, they set up the fire. Let's see, do they, does she have any oil? I mean, she must have some supplies. Probably something the, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know, do elves even need to eat? Well, it says their bodies are constantly refreshed by their their elf ruby, their heartstone thing. But I suspect they probably still have a food dye on their character sheets. So one way or the other, these skeletons probably provide her something. And she probably does at least a couple of things. Um, so I'm going to... See, maybe she just uses rush lights. Okay, does, does she does she have does she have oil like just regular lantern oil kind of stuff? Yes. All right, so they are going to set the. They're going to make the big fire. They're going to set the trap like right on the other side of the fire, and their zell. Is Zell, well, no, I guess he wouldn't want it. Zell is going to have the, uh, the the flask of oil ready to throw. So I decided to use a one of the creatures from the Book of Beasts, a Possessor. And it describes it as being a remnant of blood mist, but the timeline doesn't really work out that way. So the blood mist obviously... Did not just pop into being one day. They got access to the world and did their stuff. So this demon pre-existed the blood mist by a long time. So he had it had somehow gotten into the world and it has been sitting there stuck in Balfame's body this whole time as well. Now, let's see, looking down here, saying you could use a flaming torch or a lantern. Um, now, we set up a fire. I was just I was just trying to think of things to that, that might cause harm to something that we could set a booby trap up with, and uh, we don't have much. But, and I also couldn't find, like, an actual damage from a fire... But I did I did find an event where things catch on fire and players turn or, or players suffer 5d damage from the fire and in this case um, I'll add one because it's vulnerable to fire apparently which I, I didn't know uh, like I said I was just trying to think of, of traps and if that if that does catch fire on him, Zell's going to throw that flask of oil, and I think that oil will turn it into a... Um, he'll have to put it out. The demon will have to put it out. All right, lady. I think we're as ready as we'll ever be. Set your skeletons and to try to grab it, try to trap it, try to pull it to the ground, and I'll try as best I can to <laughs> chop it with my sword. All right, human. If you don't win, we all die today. I have no strength. I will be nothing more than this demon's next body.
All right, let me set up the map real quick. They have their... Plan set up. They have the fire burning outside of the outside of the tree where it's going to open up. And here is Zell. He's actually he's going to be sitting here. And there are a dozen skeletons, but I decided to just make them. Uh, just just break them into into four groups of three because they're basically going to be cannon fodder, no, not even cannon fodder. They're going to be sw <laughs> swipe fodder, swipe fodder. And Grelf, Grelf the elf. Well, he's not he's not an elf, but Grelf the demon. Although he's in fox form, he's just watching. is he's he's hopped up on one of the remaining stone piles of rubble and he's just watching impassively to see what the humans are going to do he probably thinks they're going to get their asses kicked like they did when they tried to fight him <laughs> we are ready lady May the gods and fortune favor us. Very well. And the tree starts to untwist, cracking and creaking, splitting in loud, thunderous rips. It's been twisted like that for so long. And it's even though it's been twisted, it has been growing. And so it, it, it's pretty big, it's huge, and it splits and it turns. And among the cracks, as, it, as the fibers start to come apart, he can see the remains. He can see what's inside. And as the, the, the branches and the limbs finally unwind... And assume a, well, a more normal shape of themselves, even though now they've been twisted for generations. So that twisted is their normal shape now. A, the rotted, but somehow relatively preserved body of an elven lord is revealed. And it looks around and bellows and it stumbles basically into the uh, into the fire and Zell is gonna try to throw Zell, don't fail me now. I guess that'd be marksmanship. No, I don't want to do that. And I think because it's kind of a stationary target, and really he's only got to get it close, I'm going to give it all those dice. Oh, all right. So he lobs that just as the uh, as this creature, and they can see it's wielding a a huge elven longsword. Well, it's not huge, but it's a longsword, and it has the remains of this elven uh, corslet and helm. Of course crushed by the, the, the years of being pushed in by the tree and 
the years of not being taken care of. Balfan, Balfame, whatever I called it before. <laughs> He's, it steps out, and the oil uh, bottle shatters, and fire rises up, and it's screaming. Rah! Now, since it is a, it, it's a campfire, really, with the five dice, uh, I've just decided. But I'm going to add, I think because that's like four right there, I'm going to add... Another die for it being uh, vulnerable to flame. And two more die for the two critical. So that's three. So I'm going to make that an eight die fire attack against this demon. I'll just use... Lennox's sheet. And if any of these, if these do help, then he's going to have to make a move roll to put out the fire. And that's the next part of our tricky trickiness. None. None. All right, so the <laughs> unfortunate, with eight dice, he would get no successes. But yeah, I guess even the best laid plans of mice and men off go asked astray. So the, the oil that he threw didn't quite have the same flammability as something he might expect. Uh, so he throws it, it splashes, but the fire itself, he stumbles through the fire, maybe because he has elven boots on, maybe because he has, uh, uh, because the, the elven lord has some kind of, uh, uh, you know, immunity whatever he did not burn himself as he walked through the fire and the flames caught him on fire i'll be honest if i were gming uh, i would probably have at least given them a couple points of damage but so the demon is going to go and his next step as he's uh Leaping, well, maybe he just leapt over the fire. He, he knew what was going on. He realized that they had thrown that on him, and he leapt over, he leaped over the fire before the oil could, could catch, maybe. We'll say that what it is. But he would have had to have landed by our bear trap. So he lands in the bear trap. And we'll give him a move roll to see if he can get out. All right, he has an agility of one of four. No move skill though, so just a straight. Straight agility roll to uh, to make a movement. Is he able to land without getting, without landing on the bear trap? No. All right, so he will take. Um, I'm gonna say it gives him a it gives a plus two. So I'm gonna say that it, this this bear trap. I mean, you step in a bear trap. This is gonna cause a lot of damage. But I'll give it. 
two dice to see if it actually damages uh, causes damage. I mean, he is undead and, and everything else, so even if it does cause, would cause damage to a human, maybe it won't affect him as much. No, okay, so it does, it does stop him. So he can't get out of the way. He can't go charging at anybody. And now, I guess we just go to a normal initiative. Deal cards and turn order. All right, so good. Good, the monster gets to go first. Exactly what we always wanted. <laughs> All right. Well, even though he the the monster uh, is not on fire, maybe he should have put the <laughs> the trap in the fire. Um, it it can't move to attack. So let's see, let's see what it does. Roll one die six using its monster, so a two. Sweeping claw attack. It's all adventurers within near range. All right, I'm gonna say at this point, let's see, near range. Are the skeletons in near range? No, I don't think so, because they would have initially. So I think, I think his, his action is wasted. He's going to have to make a, a move test, I think, to get out of there. Nope, so he is he's still he's still stuck. Of course, for us to get <laughs> to do anything, we've got to get closer to him ourselves. So now Lennox and these skeletons. Well they just all kind of they just all kind of rush into attack. You know, I guess Lennox could actually try to push that guy onto the fire. You know, I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to come over. He's going to run, and he's going he's gonna to try to knock that guy into the fire. So I think that's going to be a push. All right, so he's going to use the... Going to use the shove as a fast action, and it says you try to push your enemy away, roll melee. It talks about whoever has the highest strength. Now, he has a strength of 10, but the monsters are generally. The, I don't know if it uses the. Because it doesn't use the same, like dice and it's just kind of their hits but and probably monsters can't normally be pushed but he's in a human so i think just to level that out he'll, he'll have a strength of 10 so we'll say that his uh, his strength is higher but he's going to yell for the skeletons to all help him push so i think lennox it's going to be a melee. Let's see. I don't think he, he wouldn't get a if he if he had something that was hooked. He probably would get a, a bonus for the gear. But he's actually just trying to shove.
and I'm going to give him I'm going to give him three skill dice. I'll say two since the skeletons are so weak. I give him a bonus two skill dice to do this shove. For the skeletons kind of clinging on and, and, and pushing over. All right, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so he gets three. Uh, that's, that's more than enough to shove this... Uh, to, to shove this desiccated, uh, saggy-skinned, possessed uh, body of uh, bell fame or ball fame into the fire and i'm not even going to roll for it if you you know if you got in the first sentence you know maybe that he avoided the fire somehow which he did he kind of leapt over it but in this case there's he's he's covered with oil i mean zell got like two or three successes so he's got the oil he gets pushed over and He's on fire. So we're gonna do this again. This time he's, he's gonna do he's gonna do the six, but now but now he's on fire. So he's gonna start taking one point every turn until he makes a uh, passes a move test. So they kick him back. He starts he lights up and he starts screaming, rawr, rawr. and the. Uh, the body is it is like the the mouth is opening up and it looks like he's it looks like he's trying to throw up as if something inside is trying to get out but uh the elven princess nia is straining struggling to keep it inside to keep the possessor inside oh and, and by the way they also they took those bottles, those vials, off the tree as as part of their preps, too, by the way. So now we're back to D6 for a damage roll as that guy catches on fire. Okay, well, not... Uh, or 60... Not not exactly the best that I was hoping for, but so he goes down from ten to nine. But now he is on fire, so I'm gonna say every turn until he makes a move, he's gonna take one point of damage. And while we're while we're at it, uh he's he's gonna he's gonna slash at that dude. He's gonna slash that guy. Uh, Lennox is. And he can't... He can't dodge. And he's prone, so I don't think he can really parry. I I'm just going to give Zell a straight up chance to hit him. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how that works, but... Uh, and we're also going to give him an armor value of five to represent the the rotted but still somewhat effective armor that this uh, creature is wearing. But first, broadsword. Bring me my broadsword. Really? I don't think... I don't think at this point he's going to risk... He's not going to risk pushing right now. So, Zell... Or not Zell, but Lennox tries to close in and get a good shot. But the... <laughs> um, the, the skeletons are in the way and the... The fire rises up into the air, and Lennox steps back, not willing to getting get himself caught 
on fire. So Lennox has shoved the opponent. That was kind of cool. And now the skeletons. Yeah, they were they're really just all kind of climbing on on him, trying to hold him down. So next turn, Belfame. Now he does have abilities. He may not he may be happy to uh to maybe try to burn. Demon Tongue, Sweeping Claw, Demon Breath. I'm going to say that he can do... He, he's going to try to make a move as well as using his monster ability, which is probably what he should have done last turn. So he's going to... It's going to be a move... So he's prone. So he's going to get up. So that's going to be a change of stance, I guess. Now, so he's going to get up and then he's going to try to put the fire out. All right, so he's not able to put the fire out. He does get up, though. And let's go ahead and... Oh, yeah, we need to mark him down one. And let's roll one die six. See what he decides to do. Two. Sweeping Claw Attack. The Possessor strikes with its mighty demon claws in a sweeping attack that hits all adventurers within near range. Roll for the attack with eight base dice and weapon damage one. Alright, so that's... Um, I'm going to say that's a combination of him using his... Demon Claws, and the old Elven Longsword just, even he's on fire, he's up, he's just all over the place, slashing and hacking and hacking and slashing and hacking, slashing. And we'll use, we'll use Lennox's eight die, eight die against, okay, we'll say Zell is, well, Zell is still in the back, uh, or not in the back, but He's out of range shooting. All right, so Zell, I'm gonna say Zell's out of range. This is for this is for Lennox. I think I'm gonna make a single attack. Now there's twelve skeletons total. I'm gonna make a single roll, and every success is gonna just wipe out a skeleton. So this is for Lennox, against Lennox, that is. Two against Lennox. He's slashing. Lennox is going to go ahead and try to dive out of the way. See if he can do that. One. All right, so he's going to count on his armor. So he does, he cancels out one point of damage as he barely manages to leap out of the way and the remainder of his armor. Okay, sweet. And it didn't penetrate his armor, so that skull doesn't do anything. So the slashing in the claws, Lennox leaps out of the way just in time, and the tip of one of these demon claws just scratches across his leather armor, 
barely keeping him from being opened up from gizzard to gullet. And now another roll. This roll is the... This is going to be the eight dice against the um, skeletons. Now the creature, it, the, the monster, it doesn't actually have any points, uh, any actions left because it tried to put the fire out and then it used its attack. So it doesn't have the ability to parry, which is good because I wasn't really sure how to roll his parry or its parry to start with because it has it has d10 strength but does that does that mean it gets a d10 for parry i don't know it seems kind of high for a parry but it is a demon monster thing so either way though it's a moot point because it does not have any actions also i forgot to roll the Swordmaster for Lennox, so he actually gets one more skill die, which I'll figure out. So, one, two, three, four. Four points of damage. And then I will roll a single skill. A single extra skill point. Alright, no... All right, so four points against the the monster, and like I said, I'm going to give him five points of armor to represent his elven corslet and helmet. All right, so he stops. The armor stops one. So one, two, three, three points of damage on the monster takes him down from eight to five as zell's arrows fly overhead and lennox drives slashes his broadsword into the beast he probably uh i don't know i guess i could have maybe given him a couple extra Dice for the skeletons, but I think three hits is probably good. And the... You know, I, I guess maybe what I'll do with, uh, since I didn't give them, since I didn't give them any kind of bonus <laughs> uh, to Zell, I will or to Lennox's attack, I'm just going to give them... There's four tokens, so I'll give them a four die attack against the monster as they feebly claw and bash. Nope. All right, so they don't they don't do anything effective against the monster. But now the monster is again trying to move. This is the monster's move to put out the fire. No fire, so the monster, the monster is, well, I mean, there is fire. The monster is on fire, but the monster takes a point from the fire. And then he does one of his monsterly things. Five. What's a five? Decapitation. Uh oh The demon throws itself at a chosen adventurer within near range and tries to bite their throat. Roll for the attack with 12 base dice. A damage of 2. Alright, well, I think... I, don't, I think he's going he's gonna to go for uh, Lennox, of course. Zell is out of range, and there's no point with the skeletons. And even though he's he's pinned, if it were say he he leapt, you know, could leap two places, or he you know flying in the air, I'd say no that he was still trapped by 
that, but Lennox is right there because he just clubbed him in the in the head with his sword. All right, 12. 12 base damage with a damage of 2. That's not going to be good. All right, Lennox. This could be this could be curtains. That's a lot of dice. I know if I were rolling it, if I were rolling it for Mike <laughs> For uh, Lennox to do something, it would probably not be that great. But 12 dice. It's a massive attack. Oh, okay. So four. So that's going to be uh, one, two, three, four, five hits. Uh, Lennox is going to definitely try to... Leap out of the way of that. Four dice. Eesh. Um, you know what? He is going to... He's going to use his melee. He's going to spend one willpower point to use his adaptable attribute and try to use his melee skills to move out of the way instead. <laughs> All right, so he does manage to stop one, but I tell you, that's uh, that's a lot of damage that he, I mean, he, he's, he might get swiped out there. So he's going to push. Oh, yeah. So as he as he pushes, he uses his his melee footwork. And the the as the demon lashes out and he could tell he's getting ready to try to bite his neck off. Lennox manages to escape, to get out of the way, leaving the monster open for Lennox's attack. And so Lennox, he's going to use his melee again. Or actually, he's going to use his broadsword. I'm going to use that broadsword. I'm going to try this little button here again, see if that works. The roll button here. Okay. So there's there's something either that I've done wrong or that doesn't match there. But when you push it, it does fill out that. Now that is a satisfying hit, my friend. Four hits. Now he's not going to try to push it. Uh, he's going to he's going to fight methodically, make his strikes, and step back out. So that's going to be four hits, or actually one, two, three, four, five points of damage. We'll see if the ancient elven armor helps what's left of Galfaim. Okay, helps one. Dang it, I forgot to roll my extra die again. So, so I think, I don't know, it's late. Should I be nice and let myself roll it again? I think I will. Oh, that's cool. I, I I hadn't really noticed this stuff down here. When you fill it in, it tells you stuff. So that's cool. Edge 
point damage too. All right. Uh, but his extra die did not help. The elven armor stops one success. So one, two, three, four points. Four points on Monsieur Demon. Brings him down to a zero. And just because I'm always curious as to how, how he's dying, a 2-4 with a slash. Bleeding thigh. All right, well, he doesn't have a bleeding thigh, so... He, uh, Lennox bites in with a, with a mighty cut, slashes across one thigh and into the other, causing this decayed body to topple back into the fire, screaming, Wah! and as the body starts burning away, starts, uh, falling apart the uh lennox shouts at zell bring the go bring the vials bring the vials and he grabs one that he had and they both as the um as lady nia had instructed they both open them up and as these red wisps are swirling amidst the smoke, and there's this ethereal, echoing scream, uh, distant sounding though, it's not piercing, it's, it's distant, the bottles open up, and some of the, this red gets sucked in to each of the bottles, as, and as she instructed, when it's at the top, they put the stoppers back in. And that's how the demon fights go. You fight one demon and he completely wipes out your party. And then you fight another one and no one hardly gets hit. Although, if, if I had not pushed, if, if Lennox had not pushed that, that, uh, <laughs> that dodge roll... Uh, he would have been possibly killed. So that was that was a close one. That was a close one too. So the 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 chopped body continues to burn, and as it burns. The dry, dead tree also catches on fire. Its low-hanging limbs catch, and the dead, desiccated, dried trunk goes up like a funeral pyre for poor Balfam, or maybe not so poor, now that he has finally been put to rest. And so that finally Lady Niha can be can rest as well. And in fact, the the skeletons they start going back to what they were doing, like nothing had happened, like they weren't overly helpful, which they <laughs> which no, they weren't. They I guess they did give me a couple of dice, but uh, s some of them are missing a few limbs. One of them, as it walks away, finally just crumbles. Its component bones falling into a pile. And in fact, as each of them starts walking away, they each crumble. One takes a step, and the leg falls off, and the body tilts forward and collapses with the sound of of a dried out xylophone as the, as the bones clatter and clank against one another. 
and soon the skeletons are all gone. Having no more connection to this place now that the remains of their master are now ashes rising from his ancient prison. The fox looks at them, gives a small appreciative nod, hops off the rocks it was on, and runs off into the distance. And they are left alone to stare at the burning tree, moving back from it because it's years of being a, a rank, desiccated prison for a terrible demon. Makes it stink. But over that, they can hear sobbing. And they look up, and from a small window, they can see that Princess Nia, her head is on the, on the ledge, on the sill. Her hair has fallen through, now long, uh, long as, as it's let down, and bouncing in the wind in time to her sobs <laughs> well lennox he's fulfilled his part of the bargain he needs it but uh doesn't think that this is necessarily the time to approach her about it she is, uh, in, in fact, when they, after they let her cry, she suddenly, she suddenly stops and they look up and they're just sitting there patiently minding their own business, talking about the battle as uh, warriors do in the aftermath. And she stops they look up and she's not there anymore. Zell and, or uh, Lennox uh, reluctantly heads up the steps. And he doesn't see her. And he looks around the room. And there is a, uh, there's a little alcove that they had not really seen before. Or he hadn't really seen before because it, well, there was a curtain drawn across it. And in it is a very, very simple cot. Like a, like a farmer's, you know, like a, a cotter's cot. A, a poor person's cot. And she has collapsed in it. Elves, it is said they don't sleep. But she has collapsed into this cot. And she is meditating um a lot like she's <laughs> a lot like she's asleep so they go back downstairs he doesn't want to steal the gem it's still there on the arm well does he want to steal it as he's looking at it ponder uh, kind of rubbing his chin her exhausted whisper comes from the cot. Take it, Master Lennox. It's yours. I just need to rest. I need to rest for many years. Thank you for freeing both of us. May your journey home be a safe one. And may you be able to save your people. 
And then she lets out what is a very unelvenly but soft snore. <laughs> so they return to camp. There really is nothing here. Um, I take that back. The elf, the elf's equipment. Now, anything that it might have had is is ruined, and they don't want to touch it anyway. So there's really nothing here for them, except the jewel, so no treasure or whatever. But they've now found the magical pine cone that Lady Sif wanted. So they spend the rest of the day sharpening swords, fixing equipment, and I'm just going to let him fix his armor, for goodness sakes. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I'll, I'll let him roll for it. And it's still not really the best place to, uh, you know, hang around and try to hunt and such. Hey, all right. So he got a crafting success and there we go. So as he has as he has to uh um work on repairing the the new slash that almost opened him up from this uh, possessor demon he manages to uh, get everything everything repaired this time. And they don't really uh, they they don't really try to go anywhere today, or do they? Or do they? Because that was just really that was just the first watch. That was just the morning battle. Well, I think at one hour, I think one hour, we're at a good stopping point. We defeated the demon. We got the gem. And you, you were all there to see it. They're all there with me. So, and Lennox and Zell. And even Grolf, who ran away, but he found he his curiosity was satisfied. And he left without deciding to kill the party again. So <laughs> there's always a plus there. Uh, but thanks for coming along. I had a that, that was a blast. Now that's really half the adventure's over. Uh, that was just getting the thing. Now they've got to go back and find <laughs> find out how to use it. But that is an adventure for a different day. <laughs> All right, happy gaming.